to go. Can you turn the computer on? I can. It's pin on. Yeah. You saw the flickering of the okay, resource. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, you can also see on the scope the flickering of the go jam before it stabilizes. Okay, so you can turn it off. Let's see if we got something. We actually got the trays and let's start it. Oh! So it looks like uh, inhibiting the alarm speed off and we now go past the original uh, party air and uh, see the computer <laughs> do all kind of things and this is very encouraging uh, we have a trace here uh, and it does everything right as far as we can tell let me go take you through it uh, so it comes out of reset uh, at times a step two here and goes to the boot vector it's 4000 and program counter is always ahead by one, so it's 4001. And right after that, so that's where we would have rest restarted just after, uh, but now we don't restart because we ignore the parity alarm. Uh, the ink L line comes on, and that's the increment line. So like any good real-time computer, the AGC has uh, counters that get incremented at regular amount of times. Uh, at least 29 of them and so at reset they are all requiring an increment uh, so the computer is going to do that for a while now why is incrementing cannot do anything else because the increment uses the ALU uh, but during that time we see that the instruction register is getting something and that's also something that we would have expected this is an interrupt uh, one zero three one. So and this this interrupt is actually the T six rupt that we were expecting. So uh, what very fast counter that drives the uh, RCS jet. So anyhow, it's going to ignore it uh, while it's incrementing all the counters, like a step twenty six. So it incremented most of them until it's done at twenty seven, and now is going to uh, go to the interrupt vector which is 4004 and is going to execute the rupt instruction so gets to 4005 and now at 4005 we are back in our non-existent memory so it reads 0000, which is interpreted as a jump to zero which it does uh, the program counter uh, goes back to one which is ahead just ahead of, of one to the, the actual zero and we sort of expected it to loop at zero all the time reading zeros and to our surprise it's reading 731 from location zero and the reason is that location zero is not core it's register a and apparently our register a contains all the ones um, so this instruction happens to be a masking instruction. So it executes the instructions, goes to two. Now at two, it gets yet another register, and this one has zero, three, one. And this is a jump instruction, and from uh, we don't get all the address bits, but from where it goes, we can infer that it was also full of ones because it jumped to 7777 plus 1 which is 10,000 in octal uh, and so it, it executed already two instructions correctly and then at that location we have no memory read zero so it's a jump to zero where it goes back and stays there forever so it, it did execute a couple of instructions completely correctly and now uh, our location zero has been masked to zero uh, by the previous instruction, so it's going to read zero and loop to uh, and, and continue jumping to zero. So it's stuck there, except that we should get the increments coming off every few milliseconds. 
and we actually do. So if I search for increments, I do search. There we go. Our next increment, actually there's two counters being incremented at one millisecond. The next one is five milliseconds later at six millisecond. The next one is at 8 milliseconds or something, and so on and so forth. So we get every few milliseconds, we get an increment request, which is exactly what we expected. So the thing is, executing everything that we would expect it to execute, and I have a a little chart here that shows where the counter goes, that's the beginning where it's at zero, then the 4000 region, back to zero, excursion at 10,000, and then it loops there, just doing the increments from time to time. So we have a pretty well-running computer here, it seems. <laughs>